Hey everybody! Welcome to another episode of Classic Gaming Brothers. I'm Zach. And I'm Seth. And we're the Classic Gaming Brothers. That's right, we are the Classic Gaming Brothers. We... Here again. Here for... again. Episode fifty-seven. Episode fifty-seven, five seven. I got nothing. That's that's a I, that's like there's no, nothing funny about that number. I don't know. Are we gonna do anything fun for I don't know episode one hundred? Do we Probably. restart? When do when do we restart? When well, season two yeah, of we'll, Classic Gaming Brothers happen? When episode one hundred happens, we'll just delete all the episodes and start from scratch. <laughs> from the, the same, but use only the same topics. Yeah, we'll only use the same topics, but we'll have and different opinions. To, <laughs> and then attempt to redo the episodes right yeah the same exact way that sounds like a plan that sounds like something we can do no that sounds like a terrible idea so zach what have uh you what have you been uh recently been playing well seth recently i've been playing a little game called super mario odyssey it is a platform game developed and published by nintendo for the nintendo switch it came out in october of 2017 and uh seth this game this game was a gift from my brother it was it was it It was was a a gift which brother you oh yeah so uh super mario nice brother yeah we are a nice brother uh super mario odyssey is an entry in the super mario series it follows mario and his new friend cappy who's a sentient hat that allows mario to control other characters through possession they journey across various worlds to save princess peach from mario's nemesis bowser who plans to forcibly marry her because that's what bowser does he kidnaps princesses and he tries to marry them in contrast to linear games of of other prior entries in the mario brothers franchise this game actually returns to more of an open-ended 3d platform gameplay that we remember from super mario 64 super mario sunshine and super mario galaxy overall it's very good i've actually uh completed it i completed the main storyline i've just been going around collecting the extra stars that they have or they're called moons in this game so um i've been going around collecting the extra ones of those and doing some like challenge missions and stuff so yeah it's been fun i still haven't beaten it maybe i should beat it now that you've beaten it yes yeah i just kind of like sat through and played it it was a fun pickup i i picked it up when i first got the switch i did actually get a switch pro controller for christmas this year Ooh. Uh, so maybe i will try and play it using the pro controller the pro controller is nice i have a switch light so i could get a pro controller but it would be kind of pointless <laughs> true well, I mean, you could put the Switch Lite farther away from your body. Yeah, I guess I could, yeah. Uh, so I have recently been playing Crusader Kings 3, which is a uh, a game that was made by Paradox and came out September of 2020, so this year. Well, of last year. I think I did talk about this game um, much while ago with my Byweight Pass, and I don't think I talked about it with recently been playing, but uh, it's a... Uh, grand strategy map painter type game where you essentially have a map and you're trying to paint it a certain color which is the color of whatever your faction is in crusader kings uh you control a dynasty of some manner of medieval noble and you start either in the year 867 or 1066 both of those are pretty important years when it comes to uh, Western and Eastern Europe and kind of like the formations of certain key events in history. So they're fun to play. Like 1066 is right around the same time of the like the Battle of Hastings and stuff like that, which eventually led to England changing into the hands of the Normans and all that jazz. You're trying to gain power and spread your dynasty so that it's long lasting. When your main character who you design or you decide to play as dies you play as the next character it's like the oldest character who will assume your best or and they generally will take all of your titles depending on how you have your secession laid out so i was playing as the the swedes and they have a confederate patriarchy so when the person who i was playing with eventually died a very old age all of the titles that he had would get divided equally among all of his children however he was emperor of four different regions and i wanted those 
emperor titles to go to one person who was going to be the person that I would be playing next. So I changed the law so that it could be a Scandinavian elective where important vassals get to vote who the next person is. And I had them all vote for, well, I voted for, (laughs) and the rest of the other people chose to vote the same way that I voted for, for the person that I was going to be playing next. So all the empire positions went to the same, the person who I was playing next and the other positions that I collected when that character died uh got divided among equally that sounds like so an that equal character and fair election it was it was a it was a good day for emperor dan emperor dan the grandson of emperor emperor sven <laughs> emperor 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 sven. emperor 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 sven that's right yes the pope although i guess once you get one emperor <laughs> once you get one empire you don't add more emperors no just like if you're multi-kings sven does you're not <laughs> only sven only sven so if you're wondering my character that i was playing who was the leader of the swedes was named sven sven yes and uh he was he lived to the ripe old age of 125 yeah, Sven was kicking it. He was a pretty healthy individual yeah, until the day he died. Well, yeah, way to go, Sven. So that's what I've been playing, Crusader Kings 3. That sounds fun. Well, Seth, today we're talking about something that's a little different because both the games that we're talking about came out, as in they were they were released. Correct. Uh, today we're talking about games that did not come out. They were not released. In fact, you could call them unreleased video games. Perhaps that is the title of this episode. That might be the title of this episode. Uh, so yes. Because these are all unreleased video games where we traditionally have given numbers on either hardware or software sale, we will not be doing that for this episode. It's widely assumed that they sold zero units and made zero dollars. They did lose a lot of money though, or some of them would have lost a lot of money considering that they invested into a project and did not release said project. Oh, they all lost money. The first one, not so much because it actually did technically come out, but we'll get into that. <laughs> so the first game we're going to talk about today Today is a game called Sonic Crackers. You know, like the like crackers. <laughs> you know, like wheat thins. Like wheat thins. Yeah, it's not called salt. It's teens. not Sonic wheat thins though. That would be a good name. Sonic Crackers was uh, originally found as a ROM in 1995, and it's dated for April of 1994. Sometimes Sonic Crackers is referred to as Sonic Studium or Studium, depending on how you want to pronounce that, because there is a typo in the ROM header. Instead of stadium, they put a U where the A should go. Well, I think Sonic, even Sonic Studium is a better name than Sonic Crackers. Yes. <laughs> so Sonic Crackers is actually an early prototype build of a game that would eventually become Knuckles Chaotix which was released for the Sega 32X. In Sonic Crackers, it features Sonic and Tails, who are linked together by two gold rings, and uh, the rings themselves, by linked together, they're, like, connected by, like, an energy chain, and the gameplay consists of running back and forth of the few existing levels and using these gold ring chains to get over certain obstacles. Basically, the idea being you could, like, grab Tails and throw him, and the momentum while being attached to the chain rings will throw Sonic with tails so you could get up to higher distances. The ROM does eventually crash. That's how you know it's over. Oh, (laughs) yeah. That's how you always know it's over. It just stops, yeah. (laughs) Just like Sven's heart. (laughs) It's true. So Sonic Crackers, while uh, not a lot is known about this prototype, certainly not as much as we know about some of the other games we're going to talk about today, Um, it is known to have come from a dump of a lot of ROMs that were found on the old scene bulletin board system back in the 1990s old scene was a popular bulletin board for people who were interested in in sega prototypes and sega hacking and stuff like that and there used to be rom dumps and people on the bulletin board would go through them and that's where sonic crackers was found it's widely assumed to be the prototype for knuckles chaotix mostly just due to the very similar gameplay chaotix uses the exact same type of linked ring system that crackers uses where in knuckles chaotix you can play as like knuckles and mighty who's an armadillo or sbo who's a chameleon or vector the crocodile and uh you always play as two characters and those two characters are always linked together by these rings that are connected by a chain of energy also the music is nearly identical obviously the 32x could handle a bit more power as it's a 32-bit system but the music is mostly the same and it also has a very similar level structure whereas sonic games tend to be very long in terms of length 
these games are very high, as in they have height to them. So they're not actually that wide. They're more of just tall. So you're going up. Until the game crashes. The ROM works fairly well in emulators, and you can actually find the ROM bouncing around on a couple of, you know, Sonic dedicated websites. Uh, the game, however, does not work well on real hardware. So for example, if you have a flash cart such as the EverDrive, it's a little hard to get it running on real hard drive, uh, hardware. This is due to the fact that there is an error in the sound driver for the game, which is controlled by the Z80 subprocessor. What basically what happens is the game tries to trigger something in the sound driver and it forces the game to break. It just crashes instantly. You can actually kind of avoid this if you attempt to skip the opening title screen by pressing start really, really fast. So you have to like spam the start button on your Sega controller and the game will eventually load on real hardware. But that's kind of obnoxious. So it's best to just say it does not work on real hardware. Have you used it on real hardware? So actually just today I did a little bit of a project and I found some code that you can replace in the hex code of the ROM. And I replaced that code and I flashed it to my flash cart and I did get it to run, but I haven't spent a long time with it. So I don't know if it will crash eventually. Probably will. It's again, a prototype game that was unfinished. Right. Yeah. And the only reason that I'm including Sonic Crackers is even though Knuckles Chaotix did eventually come out, it's a substantially different game than what Sonic Crackers had to offer. For one thing, you're not playing a Sonic and Tails in Knuckles Chaotix, nor do Sonic and Tails even show up. So it could have potentially been an entirely different game at some point but it was eventually scrapped to what would become knuckles chaotix which is an okay game it's not that good it's probably my least favorite classic sonic game it being anything on the sega or sega 32x right how many levels is in knuckles chaotix uh, they're called attractions in Knuckles Chaotix, not levels. So there are six attractions and each one of them is very it's they're very uh again vertical, not horizontal. So you have to go up to to complete the level. And again, it's it's an okay game. Uh, the gimmick with the ring kind of thing where you have to kind of like use momentum to get to other parts of the stage because some parts are higher than others is kind of obnoxious. It's not exactly perfect. Um, sometimes you'll do it wrong and your characters will be like sent flying around the screen obnoxiously. So it's just not the best Sonic game. They can't all be winners. Especially the later ones. In our next unreleased games, what if you took two of my personal favorite loves, that of the real-time strategy and graphical adventure adventure game and made a singular game with it who could do this blizzard entertainment did or, or well kind of did almost they certainly made the game uh called warcraft adventures which is a warcraft themed graphical adventure the game was co-developed by blizzard entertainment and animation magic from 1996 until 1998 animation magic was also involved with developing those games that we had on the Philips cdi yeah the zelda cdi games yeah that we talk about in our <laughs> Philips cdi episode so the game exists what well, was not released retail wise zach played a little bit of it yeah it's set in a time period after the events of warcraft 2 which is warcraft 2 beyond the dark portal where you follow an, an orc that is known as thrall who is very popular in warcraft 3 and world of warcraft he's also i believe in the warcraft movie i still haven't seen it uh i think it's baby thrall oh baby thrall yeah like baby yoda so thrall is in his, is his quest to reunite the orc people which is what thrall does um it's kind of like his theme. It would have been a graphical adventure game that has a point and click interface, a la games like um, The Dig, the Gabriel Knight series, or any other type of like uh, graphical adventure games putt, putt. <laughs> it was uh conceived in 1996 after capital multimedia which is a sister company to blizzard suggested that warcraft could probably make a good adventure game so blizzard chose animation magic because they essentially they were capital media multimedia so uh, animation magic fell under the parent of capital multimedia so blizzard chose to work with them to make this adventure game since they thought it was a, a decent idea it wasn't enough i it was a good enough idea to get a budget the project was then split up between different locations so the design team with blizzard uh, happened in irvine california uh animation magic who were the code and art developers 
were located in both Boston, Massachusetts, and St. Petersburg, Russia. Blizzard also worked with a company called Tune Us In, which is a Korean animation studio to develop the full motion video cutscenes. Because what else does a graphical adventure game need but full motion video? The story and script that was written was to humanize the orc race and to make Thrall a, a hero and have this journey reuniting the orc race and to paint them as a, a not necessarily just the bad guys it was also going to be very funny which was kind of to go against the overarching story which was going to be relatively dark so it was going to be a funny humorous telling of a kind of a dark story of this orc trying to reunite his fallen people they did get some pretty decent voice actors to come and work with the game uh they got peter cullen who is known for being optimus prime in transformers Tony J, who was Claude Frollo in Hunchback of Notre Dame, and Clancy Brown, who was uh, Mr. Krabs in SpongeBob SquarePants, who may- is Mr. Krabs. Yeah, he still is, website. yeah. They were all brought in to cast the game out, which is great. Yeah, strong cast for the time. In early 1998, Blizzard brought in Steve Moritzky to work on redesigning the game to bring it up to a higher standard. By the time, though, he was brought on, the game was already in alpha uh so like the voice recording was done the visuals were complete and you could play the game through to completion uh, even though that there were a lot of software bugs steve wasn't really able to help bring the game over the finish line so the game was eventually canceled it was uh pushed and pushed and pushed to be like fall of 20 uh, of 28 of 1998 and then eventually was just canceled part of the main reason that the game was canceled was was the game was originally designed based on popular LucasArts games at the time, such as Dig and Full Throttle. And I believe Indiana Jones was, at least one of the Indiana Jones was out. LucasArts was very good at making very popular adventure games. So Blizzard wanted some of that money. Well, if they released it in fall of 1998, they would be directly going up against uh, the Curse of Monkey Island, which was going to be, is was just a better adventure game overall. And the upcoming 3D game, Grim Fandango, and which was also a really great adventure game. Uh, so Warcraft Adventures would have just, not only would have gone up against some really big popular games uh, that would have taken essentially the Christmas money away from them and then by the time that initial buy is gone they wouldn't have like it's hard to recapture that audience the older you get as a video game i think that's still true today it would have already been out of date by the time it came out the studios weren't prepared to take a triple a name like warcraft and make it into a triple a adventure game You're which right. it would have had to been to compete against what they were setting their sights on on the 22nd of may of 1998 Warcraft Adventures was officially canceled. There is a leaked build that is available online, though is not sanctioned by Blizzard. It has been called a quote-unquote conventional, borderline, dull, point-and-click adventure game by some reviewers. Which, so at the end of the day... Blizzard probably made the right choice by pulling the game because you do waste money on developing the game, but you don't necessarily waste money on marketing and distribution of the game, which could sink you completely. Oh, yeah. There is like the cost of creating a game, and then there's also the cost of getting that game into the hands of consumers. Blizzard essentially didn't buy into the sunk cost fallacy and just decided to cut their losses and walk away with a marketing budget intact as it were. So uh, the next game that we're going to talk about is going back to a bigger franchise. It's Super Mario. The game is called Super Mario's Wacky Worlds. It would have been a sequel to Super Mario World that was developed for the Philips CDI, our favorite system. So Super Mario Wacky Worlds was developed by Nova Logic, who were hoping to be hired by Nintendo. So basically, Nova Logic had been in discussion with a Nintendo sales executive who had suggested that a simple style similar to a super nintendo game 
could be easily adapted to the CDI and would actually work well for the CDI. Novologic took this as kind of a cue to start working on this follow-up to Super Mario World. Their idea would have been that they would put together a kind of a demo for the Super Mario Wacky Worlds presented to Nintendo, say, look at what we've done. What do you think? And Nintendo, their, their hope was that Nintendo would have said, go right ahead, build this game, we'll pay you. The game was developed in about two weeks, uh, reportedly being worked on 24 hours of day in these two weeks. The game offered a series of different levels that Mario could explore, each based on realistic locations. There was an ancient ruins level based on Greece, a one based on Egypt and the Aztecs. There was a haunted castle, a haunted ship, and a haunted house. There were some jungle settings, there was an Arctic setting, and there were some quote-unquote wacky settings with names like Neon City, Geometropolis, and Land O' Plaid, as well as some tubular settings such as Pipeworks, Sewer, in chemistry lab tubular, tubular <laughs> settings an incomplete build does exist of the game it allows mario to uh kind of travel around these locations however mario cannot be killed or take damage according to reports from developers that incomplete build was approximately 80 percent of the art 95 percent of the design and about 30 percent of the code that had been finished for the final project nintendo overall really liked the demo and they were honestly impressed with the work that was done. However, by the time the demo was presented to them, you could say that history had already made its motion because the CDI was doing very badly <laughs> and sales were not performing as well for the CDI or the projects that had been released for the CDI. So the game was canceled. Uh, many designers that were working on it in Nova Logic ended up actually leaving Nova Logic to go work for Electronic Arts. That's a fun company. In fact, that fun company has the license for the next <laughs> nice game. little nice little segue uh so the the last game that we're going to be talking about that never was is star wars 1313 rest in peace i i feel like you could say 1313 or 1313 it's kind of like saying at at or at at i've heard it style like i've heard it said as 1313 but i'm sure it can be said either way i mean i guess you could also say 1303 <laughs> 13 well, it's true <laughs> 1313 <laughs> yeah uh, anyway, Star Wars 1313, a game that was in the pipeline for PS4, Xbox One, and Microsoft Windows. 1313 was first hinted at back in March of 2012, where a website, GameTrailers.tv, put a post about it on their landing page. But then, at the 2012 E3, it was announced by LucasArts, and there was footage that was then shown at GamesCon of 2012. So that was eight years ago. Yeah. And it was being developed for the PS4. PS4 is an older system. I know. It is getting, it's getting up there now. Anyway, so 1313 was supposed to be a third-person action-adventure game set in the seedy underworld of Coruscant, specifically level 1313. For those who are not familiar with Star Wars, Coruscant is a city planet. So the entire city, or the entire planet, is one city. And it is built up on top of more city so you can go into deeper levels and it essentially gets worse you would be playing in the game as a young boba fett early in his career as a uh, bounty hunter it looks like the game from what was released was going to be a heavy action centered segments the game with the footage that was released looked like it was going to have heavy action centered kind of segments possibly Possibly through quick time events, kind of like um, an Uncharted, but Star Wars, which would have been cool. According to LucasArts staff, it was originally inspired by a Grand Theft Auto, but they decided that they would make it more like Gears of War. And it was very supported by uh, George Lucas. They were also thinking about making a Star Wars Underworld television series. That would tie in back to the video game about Boba Fett. Well, 2013, the Walt Disney Company came in and purchased everything Star Wars related, including Lucasfilms, LucasArts, and ILM. In 2014, Disney abandoned the trademark of 1313 and the production was terminated. Uh, Lucasfilm has gone on record saying the project may eventually be picked up for a future game or project, which, perhaps, based on what has been released by Disney, may be true. Yeah, 
who knows what we will get based on the success of the shows like The Mandalorian and the shows that they have announced in the future. What about, have you ever played the Bounty Hunter game, Star Wars Bounty Hunter? I I own it for the GameCube. Is it any good? It's okay. Uh, yeah, you play as Django, which, you know, he's basically Boba because, you know, literally same actor, or at least the current same actor. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I'd have to, I have to play it. You have it on... I have it on GameCube. Um, I think there was a PlayStation 2 version, and I don't know if there was a PC version. There's one, a version on the PS4. I, I, I'm sure I can figure it out. Well... Yeah, those are some unreleased games. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be it for our unreleased video game episode. Uh, I'm sure there are other unreleased video games out in the world. Oh, there's hundreds. So this will definitely be a topic that we'll return to. I mostly just picked these because they I thought were interesting. But there's like there's like 15 unreleased Sonic games. So it's true. We could it's have true. just done an entire one on Sonic games. I think it wouldn't be an episode of Classic Gaming Brothers without us promising that we'd come back and talk about an, a topic that we've already talked about. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's, it's a fact. We, it is a fact. We are planning you to do this know. show for, like, as long as we want, so we'll have to come it's back true. to topics at some point. Anyway, let's get to our buy, wait, pass. Uh, Zach, what are you excited about for buying, waiting, or passing on? Seth, the game that I am excited about buying, waiting, or passing on is a game called Sons of the Forest, which, Seth, that's a sequel to one of my favorite games, The Forest. It's one of your favorite games, too, I think. You love The Forest. So, Sons of the Forest is an upcoming horror survival game and a sequel to The Forest by N. Night Games Limited. The game takes place on a remote, heavily forested peninsula, where the player character, who's apparently named Eric LeBlanc, and his son, Timmy are survivors of a plane crash. I hope that's the actual description for Sons of the Forest. That might be the description for the forest. But anyway, Sons of the Forest looks really cool. (laughs) There's not a lot known about it, I think, at this point. There was a gameplay trailer that dropped just recently, but I didn't. I even heard of the game when the gameplay trailer dropped. I knew they were working on a forest sequel, or I'd heard they were working on a forest sequel, but I knew nothing about it. It looks really cool. I really like the at least some of the imagery that they're showing so far. For one thing, it looks like you can team up with the bat, like the the people on the island. The like in the forest, you're playing as this character who's looking for uh, his son Timmy. Though when your character dies, you come back as a new character who's still looking for Timmy. So like I'm in like my third character at this point. So I don't know if this character's still my son i think i'm just looking for timmy at this point out of like obligation in any case in the forest there are these people on the island that are like cannibals and they're trying to kill you um and then there are also monsters on the island the monsters are like weird creatures out of like a body horror film like the thing like they're like a blob of human arms in in this game at least from the gameplay trailer there's like a scene where they show a guy building a wall but you see like the cannibal characters helping so i think this game might be doing something where you might be able to like work with them or potentially set it up in a way so that some players can maybe play as the cannibals and other people can play as the survivors. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but that's what it at least looks like to me. Also, there's a lot more gunplay in this trailer than there was in, at least so far, in the forest. I don't think Seth and my characters have even found a gun yet, and we've been playing for like 10 plus hours. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Like 10, 15 hours in that game. While. Also, there's some new mutant creatures. There's this one thing that looks like its whole body looks like a bunch of fingers coming at you it looks very weird also it shows a guy digging which i think is interesting and i really hope that means you can just dig everywhere i make caves yeah uh, or just like dig your own grave <laughs> like you could just be like i'm done <laughs> well what i think would be cool if they made it so that they, the the world was a bit more malleable you know like you could dig a hole in the ground so like minecraft yeah like minecraft but a li- like realistic looking it looks cool i i i'll probably pick it up um, I have no idea when it's supposed to be out because I don't think the gameplay trailer showed a date and I assume it's going to be coming out on the newer systems, but who knows? It might be coming out on PS4 or PC that I can run. So we'll have to keep an eye out for it, but it's, uh, it's going to be probably a buy for me. So for my buy weight pass, uh, there is a, a game that I really enjoy playing called door kickers, which is not to be confused with door kickers, action squad door kickers is a top-down game where you play as a SWAT team. Door Kicker's Action Squad is like an 8-bit side-scroller game. Both are fun, 
both involve you playing as the SWAT and tackling missions where you have to get into a building and either like rescue hostages or take out people that are bad and so on and so forth. The Door Kickers team made a sequel called Door Kickers 2 Task Force North, where instead of playing as SWAT team, you play as special forces in the Middle East while you are going into terrorists. The game is in early access and came out into early access November 3rd of last year, and of, which is 2020. It looks like the same type of mission-based type game gameplay. I enjoyed playing Door Kickers. Uh, it's a fun kind of similar to like how like Hotline Miami and you're like trying to figure out like how to get through a mission with like the least amount of casualties and all that using different strategies. I so I think I would enjoy Door Kickers too. I am going to put it down as a wait for now. I don't think I I put it on my wish list. I don't think I'm I'm going to wait till it actually releases before I pick it up. I just I have a lot of games on my deck right now. So once I get a few more games done with and I have a couple big games right now that I'm dealing with, then I'll be able to um, maybe pick up some smaller games to play like door kickers. All right. So that's going to be our episode for today. Seth, do you want me to do the call to action or do you want to do that? I can do it. I think you did it last time. Sounds good. Yep. Time. So you can take it now. If you want to contact us, listen to us, or support us, here are some ways. In order to contact us, you can send us an email to classicgamingbrothers at gmail.com. You can also send it to Seth at classicgamingbrothers.com or Zach at classicgamingbrothers.com or classicgamingbrothers at classicgamingbrothers.com. However you would like to send it, you not only get the chance to win a giveaway of getting a your choice of a game from a list of games that we have, you also get put into the giveaway to have your home answering machine recorded by our announcer josh who is an official staff member who will be on our website soon he is also very important to us and we appreciate him signing up for giving away his voice as a prize once you have his voice you have his soul (laughs) that's a classic gaming promise (laughs) <laughs> it's a classic gaming promise. You can also contact us by going to our website, which is classicgamingbrothers.com. You can go to our contact page, a contact us page, where you can fill out a form to send in an email to us. I'll read the emails. I'll respond to them. We appreciate feedback, topic options, anything that you want to send to us, uh, we appreciate. And those are the ways you can contact us. Uh, to listen to us, you're already doing it. You're listening to us wherever you listen to us now. You can listen to us on our website. You can also listen to us in any podcasting application that we have, uh, that, that, that we have, that, that are available. They're not ours. They're yours. We're on the big three, which would be Google, Apple, and Amazon. We are also on various other uh, podcasting apps such as Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and Pandora. So you can, if you're listening to us on something and you want to listen to us on something else, just search that something else and we should be there. And you can do however you listen to your podcast. We're also on aggregators like uh, Podcast Addict and all those guys. You can also listen to us on other people's podcasts. Sometimes we're guests on them, uh, such as the DNA podcast, which is Dad's Nerdy Ambitions, or Consume Culture. So you can listen to those podcasts and you can, on those podcasts, you can listen to us on those podcasts. Just look for the ones that say with classic gaming brothers and those will be the ones with us you should also listen to the rest of their podcasts you can support us by liking following sharing subscribing doing all those things we have a facebook and an instagram both are at classic gaming brothers you we also have a twitter which is cg brothers pod and there's also uh, a twitch which is twitch.tv slash classic gaming brothers you can follow all of these social medias and that's one way of supporting us you can support us by listening to our episodes you can support us by telling you three friends that you like our podcast so that they will also listen to the episode and you can also decide to buy some of our really ancient merch because it's the same stuff that's been up there forever and i maybe i'll put up some new stuff for the new year new year's resolution for classic gaming brothers we'll put up new merch sometime this year yeah that's good yeah it gives me another 365 days to deal with it yeah so that's it if you want to uh contact us listen to us or support us is there Anything else that I'm missing? I don't think so. Uh, Nothing that I can... Wait, wait, there is something. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Don't play games like my brother. And don't play games like my brother. I've been Zach. And I've been Seth. And we've been the Classic Gaming Brothers. That's right. Uh...
That's right. You took too long on your that's right. We're um, I was already ready to have our post pod conversation. Oh yeah, the post pod con. Post pod con con. Post po- the post pod pod. The pod con pod post pod. Con pod con. The, the post pod. brothers cod brothers. The, 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 the cod brothers. <laughs> the classic cod brothers.